Mr. Deputy, as the member representing the education constituency, I am disappointed with the budget. Mr. Deputy, the focus of the budget this year is to expand on our advantages and uh, build a better economy. No one would object to that. The thing is, in terms of resource allocation, is that what the government is doing as a direction? In other words, is the government talking the talk or really walking the walk? In other words, the policies that you are drawing up, can they achieve the objectives you have mapped out for yourselves? As an education representative, I cannot see how your investment in education can help us expand on our advantages and go for diversity. And I cannot feel that your policy can respond to what the last year's budget proposed to do, and that is to enhance our competitiveness. On the contrary, I can only see that resource allocation would only mean stifling job opportunities for young teachers and creating vicious competition in schools. I will go into the details in a moment. Mr. Deputy, the government has claimed that it what emphasizes education. Mr. John Zhang in the budget also says that education expenses would reach 79 billion and recurrent expenditure 71 billion, meaning uh, taking up the biggest part of the pie. But what it doesn't say is that it has 63 billion in reserve and over 80 billion in uh, surplus. In other words, compared to that kind of figures, the education expenses has been on the decrease. The total expenditure on education takes up only 16.7% of total expenditure. Compared to 24% at its peak, it is way below that peak. And it is the second lowest after reunification. Let us take a look at the last 10 years. The public expenditure on education has recorded an average growth of only 3.1%. Out of the 10 major areas, we rank the ninth. And the increase is way below the average growth of public expenditure, which stands at 4.9%. It is also lower than the inflation rate of last year, which is 4.4%. Therefore, the new increase in expenditure will only allow us to just continue with existing resources and new um, services would have to compete for old resources. What it doesn't say is also that if we compare our education expense with that of other countries, then public education expenses would still occupy a lower percentage. Uh, the ratio vis-a-vis -vis GDP is also seriously on the low side. We only take up 3.4% of GDP, and it is always lower than that in other advanced countries uh, where there is a 5 to 8%. So if you compare 3.4% with 5 to 8%, you know the situation. The biggest dissatisfaction from the education sector is that existing and new Services must be supported by new resources and manpower. However, the government has been reluctant to increase the establishment and also recurrent expenditure. Most of the expenses are met by one-off allocation or funds. Therefore, schools can only engage um, supply teachers or contract teachers. These are short-term and uncertain resources. So the school sector or education sector is um, crying out for help because they cannot make long-term plans and therefore they cannot do anything well. Teachers cannot make long-term plans to establish long-term relationships with the students. We have spent money but we have not spent it well, Mr. Deputy. In the coming one or two years, there will be a few major initiatives in the education sector. The most important and the biggest one, and that uh, also arouses the biggest concern, is the 15-year free education initiative. I must send a solemn warning to the government here. Don't even think that you can take out uh, scattered policies and the education sector 
will go away with a smile. And you have to tackle childcare education from all possible directions. And uh, if you do not give us what you have promised, we are not going to accept it. In terms of 15-year free education, we must uh, be very careful with full day and long full day childcare service. As you know, that will help us unleash uh, women's ability to work. We can satisfy the learning needs of uh, young children and uh, it can also help with gender equality, social harmony and uh, all these are very good social benefits. The Steering Committee on Population released the consultation document last year and it is said that within 30 years the labor participation rate will lower by 10 percent and the way to tackle it is to create a conducive environment for young couples to have children and full day childcare services would be the best policy in this area. We hope you can have a diversified mode to provide half day, full day and long full day childcare services um, exercising different functions so that you allow for different modes of operation. On that recognized uh, foundation, you can have a diversified subsidy scheme so as to take care of the needs of different families. You must make sure that different modes of kindergarten will have enough resources to go ahead with reasonable operation. You are very, um, you're saying that uh, you would do it on a half day basis and you would require kindergartens to provide full day or long full day kindergarten education. That is so unreasonable. Also, we have to build up a good kindergarten staff contingent. You must provide a salary scale that is going to prove attractive. This is the most important uh, part for providing um, successful kindergarten education but you are talking about a block grant and you go for the median and, and that is very worrying. The welfare sector has been the subject of a block grant ever since that was implemented. Um, it has created serious problems. We cannot allow this to be introduced uh, for childcare education. Welfare organizations have got this experience and that is after they have had uh, the block grant, they have to uh, s spend less, they have to send people away and uh, it has a, a big impact on the quality of service. If this is applied to childcare services, it would even be more difficult because kindergartens operate on a much smaller scale than NGOs. In the last report of the Audit Commission, it is said that we must be able to maintain a team of qualified staff. That is so important for kindergartens. Uh, the wastage rate of teachers, if it is high, will have a negative impact on kindergarten education. We ask the government to formulate a sound and healthy salary scale for kindergarten teachers. It must be made mandatory and the salary scale should reflect experience and education background. The salary level must be uh, attractive enough in order for us to have good teaching staff. Anything that seeks to suppress salaries and uh, any mechanism that provides the incentive uh, to send away experienced staff will be objected to by us plus professional development for teachers will have a positive impact on kindergarten education. That is well known. The quality of education depends on the quality of the teachers. Whether it's about subsidizing kindergartens and childcare centers and the voucher scheme, those are positive measures to promote a higher um, entry point for kindergartens. In 2010, uh, there is the pre-primary uh, education voucher review. It is pointed out that there should be a fund for continuous education for uh, kindergarten and also there should be a study into a school-based kind of funding. But then it's unfortunate that in the presently released 15-year free education, none of such schemes are mentioned. If that's the case, there will be stagnation of the development of teachers and compared to Singapore and Taiwan, we will lag behind them even more. 
we urge the government to build up this professional ladder for kindergarten teachers. You must have dedicated funding to support continuous learning for kindergarten teachers and there must be a timetable for kindergarten teachers to be university graduates. In that way, we can enhance the quality of kindergarten education. Recently, the U.S. President Barack Obama um, released the State of the uh, Union and he mentioned some research results in the U.S. saying that the return rate uh, of uh, investing in childcare service would be up to 10 percent and bills passed by the U.S. Congress uh, would mean that there would be more pre-primary places uh, as a result of Congress funding and it is said that this should be the center of social policies. If we invest early enough in childcare services, there would be a high return rate. In some countries, um, it is said that kindergarten teachers must be graduates or even a master's degree holders, Mr. Deputy. And this kind of vision about kindergarten education is the same as what we Chinese believe in, that a a man's character is decided when he is at the age of three. So it goes to show that kindergarten education is extremely important and uh, the, if there is any damage done, it is irreversible. If you still stick to your old ways and refuse to respond positively to the aspirations of the education uh, sector and don't address the high wastage rate in kindergartens and when full-time students do not have uh, enough support, if you refuse to face up to all these important issues, then you are not taking advantage of this important historical landmark. The review has been for two years and there are high aspirations from uh, teachers, parents and schools. If there is no good solution, the responsibility would rest squarely on this term of government. Mr. Deputy, I'd like to talk about primary and uh, secondary education there are fewer and fewer S1 students and the education department did not do good planning so that the secondary school sector um, is so afraid that the schools will be closed and they cannot concentrate on teaching. The establishment of secondary school teachers has been frozen, it has even shrunk and there are now surplus teachers and it is impossible for young teachers to get a job and therefore teacher training resources have gone down the drain and now there is a gap uh, in the education sector. On the one hand, you shrink the establishment and young teachers cannot get a job, but at the same time, there is a short supply of manpower in the schools. Teachers have an excessive workload. The review of the NSS is only looking at curriculum and uh, examination, and you have dodged the issue of establishment, not to mention uh, teacher-student ratio. You cannot um, enhance the teaching environment. Again, you have let an opportunity slip. What is more unfortunate is that uh, subsidies that can help relieve the manpower situation, say for example um, funding for better teaching of English, uh, etc., have been terminated so that contract teachers have been sent away. And the problems of young teachers not getting a job has deteriorated as a result. And who is benefiting from all these? Is it good for education? Is it good for the government? We require the Education Bureau to expand the ex establishment of teachers. And next year, there should be the reduction of two to three students in every class. And you should refine the class structure and also uh, try to retain surplus teachers for a longer period. I would also talk about integrated education. It should be supported. Unfortunately, in mainstream schools, we can only have a teacher doing coordination for special education, but this teacher will not be on the uh, permanent establishment, but can only be employed on contract. But he cannot do any coordination role because he may not have the position and power to coordinate integration of education in the entire school. And this is way away from what we have asked for. In terms of other subsidies, Mr. Eddie Ng, the Secretary for Education, should be taken to task because he must come up with a good policy so the budget 
will also include uh, such initiatives.